Hello there. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make your own personalised uh, spiral ring. Um, in this example here um, I've written the name Susan on this ring and wrapped it around a spiral curve. Um, in the background is a, a bracelet and there's a video on, our, uh, web on, on YouTube where you can see how to make the bracelet as well. Um, so um, if we start Fluid Designer for 3D printing up um, I'm going to use these uh, snap fonts to write the name Susan um, and we're going to create a ring um, if I just go to the rings folder first of all and uh, this is uh, all UK size rings um, I'm going to create a ring now we're not actually going to use this object to do it I'm just uh, demonstrating that I'm going to use UK size P plus which is 18.14 uh, millimeters internal diameter. The default ring here is uh, about 15 millimeters internal diameter. I'm going to create a ring which uh, is 18.14 millimeters on the inside. So if I just go to file and new, um, and I'm going to write the name Susan around this ring. So the first object that I want is, is an S. And if I just pull that to the side now, if we just look over here, we can see what the uh, height of this is. Um, it's 16 and a half millimeters high. Now, if you did want to make that uh, narrower, you can do. You can scale it down and scale the other objects. But I'm going to leave them at that height at the moment. Um, also, if we look here, we can see the cross section of this is one millimeter by two. So that's one millimeter there and two millimeters deep. I'm actually going to change that, but I won't change it until uh, until later. So uh, just go to view and top view again. I'll just switch on screencast key. So any key presses I make should be displayed down here. Um, so I need a letter U now. So if I go to file and append and uh, I want letter U, so it's snap font U. And we always append the objects, so it's snap for you, append from the library. And then I'll just reposition that. And you can play around and position these wherever you want. Uh, so file and append. Oh, actually, no, I want another S now because I'm spelling Susan. So if I highlight S, if I go to tools, object tools, and duplicate that object, and then press the enter key, and then just move the second copy out to the right there. And we can see in the outline of panel here we've got the original S, the second S, and the U. And we will merge all of these later. Um, so if I go to File and Append, go up through the menu system until you get to Alphabet uh, Snap Fonts. So I've got SUS, I want an A now. So it's the object Snap Font A Append from the library. And I'll just move that across. And I'll just move it down because obviously I want the bottom and the top to be in line here. And I need an N. So file and append up through the menu system, alphabet snap fonts, and N object append from the library. And again, we just need to position that. Okay, now <clears throat> once you've got those uh, five objects, what we can do is first of all, we need to make sure the N is highlighted. So if, when you click on it, you'll see the yellow line around it. That means it's properly highlighted now. And you can see that in the outliner panel. And if I hold down the shift key, if I select all five objects and go to tools, object tools, and join them all together, we've now just got one object, snap font S, uh, in our outliner window. Now I'm going to change the center of gravity of this and put it over in the middle of the object. And I do that by going to tools, object tools, origin to the geometry of the shape and then this object here is the cursor and so I'm going to move this back to the cursor and I can do that by going snap selection to cursor so that just centers it on my screen now um, now I'm going to uh, wrap an object around the outside of this uh, and to do that um, I'm going to first of all open up the properties panel uh, sorry the toolbox panel and uh, I'm going to add a NURBS circle. Now the NURBS circle's only got a radius of one at the moment, so it's this quite small object in here. 
I want to expand that, so I'm just dragging this with the right mouse button, sorry, with the left mouse button, increasing the radius, and I want to get it until it's just, just outside of the object there. Um, okay, so yeah, that, that, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I can close this uh, toolbox panel down now. And uh, what I want to do is wrap that around the outside of Susan. So first of all, I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode. And uh, all control points are highlighted here. So if I hit the right mouse button and subdivide, I'll get some extra control points here, 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 and also on the other sides as well. And uh, what I want to do is I want to spread this out around Susan now. So if I press S on the keyboard for scale and limit the scaling to the X direction. So if I press X and then if I just move my mouse to the right there, um, I'll position it round about there. And then I'll just move the object to the right slightly. So I've got Susan just inside um, that curve now. So I can press the uh, tab key to come out of edit mode. And uh, in order to get the curve around the outside the same thickness as the Susan, with the curve highlighted, so that's this NURB circle highlighted, if I hold down the shift key and click on um, my bracelet, Su uh, sorry, my uh, ring name Susan there, and then if I go to Tools, Object Tools and join them together, I'll end up with just one object again, so the NURB circle has disappeared here. And uh, if I just view that from the top, um, I just need to tidy this up a little bit now. So you can see they're a bit sort of sticking out here. I don't want that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight those two control points there and uh, just move them to the left. Now that's changed the appearance of my N a little bit, but I'm not worried about that too much. Um, yeah, that looks okay. And similarly here, if I highlight those two control points and just move them to the left. So I'm just making sure they're on the inside of my object here. Now the other thing I need to make sure occurs is that I do need some of these points to be moved up. So that uh, I have got my Susan touching the outside of this ring so that uh, it remains a nice solid. Um, those three points there, um, I'm going to actually delete them. X on the keyboard and delete them. They're not doing anything. Um, view from the top again. And uh, I'm going to move this one up a little bit. So that I've got some right now. I'm going to switch off the snap here so I've got more control. So I just want it to be uh, interacting with the outside there of the ring and I'm going to do the same with that one just go view and top just going to move that up as well okay so I've just reshaped Susan there and uh, I need to go down here and probably click on a couple of control points there and just move them up and this one I could probably move it down actually what you don't want is it sticking through Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's tidied it up now. Um, obviously, you know, with the real thing, you want to spend a little bit more time and make sure that's absolutely spot on. So I've got Susan there, so I want a, um, a ring object now, a curve to wrap it around, and I'm going to use a spiral curve here. So I'm going to open up the toolbox panel again, and I'm going to add a curve, and I'm going to add a spiral curve. And uh, if I zoom in, we can see what that looks like. As you can see, it's quite small at the moment. Now, we're going to use UK size P+, which is 18.14 millimeters. So I'm going to change this radius here. I'm going to change it to 9 millimeters. I'm not... To, whoops. Um, 9 millimeters. I hit the wrong key on the keyboard. Um, so that gives me... Uh, that circle has got a radius of about 18 millimeters, but we'll adjust that later. Um, you can see it's a little bit chunky here. It's not very rounded, and that's because of the steps. So if I increase the steps here, this will become more and more rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type 360, as in 360 degrees in a circle, to round that off. Um, now, I've got um, 
it looks like a circle at the moment rather than a spiral so what I need to do is I need to change this height there so you can see as I pull that up I get a spiral shape and I'm going to enter in 10 for the moment and I may need to change that later um, so I can close that uh, panel down now so what I want to do is I want to wrap my ring around this spiral and so the first thing I need to do is I need to rotate it about the x-axis 90 degrees. So if I press R on the keyboard, X to limit my rotation to the x-axis and 90 degrees. Um, that changes the orientation of the ring. Um, now I want to wrap it around this spiral. Well we can do that uh, using a modifier. And the modifier we want is a curve modifier. And I want to curve my ring around the object called spiral. And uh, I need to scroll right down to the bottom to find this. So there's the spiral object. So there you are. You see I can wrap it around the spiral. Now a couple of things that I need to do here. Um, you notice that only half the object is wrapped around the spiral. This half is uh, sticking out. Well if I go to view and front view and uh, press the tab key on the keyboard you can see that half my object is to the left of the y-axis and half is to the right if i press a on the keyboard to highlight all the control points and just move my object to the right there so that the left hand side of the object is in line with the y-axis when i press the tab key now you can see all of my ring is wrapped around that spiral um, now that's clearly not very good as a ring at the moment, so we do need to uh, change a couple of other things. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down in size a little bit. Um, it's just, there's too much of it at the moment. So if I press the S key on the keyboard and just reduce the size of it, Okay, I'm going to leave it as there at the moment. Now, whenever you scale objects like this, you must always do Control A and apply the scale. And notice the thickness comes back to the object. That thickness is controlled over here uh, in curved data. The cross section is one by two. Now, I don't actually want it to be two millimeters deep, so I'm going to change this now to one by one. So uh, there's my uh, one by one thickness. That should mean it should be 3D printable. Now it will be slightly thinner at the top here because of the curve. Um, but I'm fairly confident that it should be okay once we uh, tidy this up a little bit. Now you can see it's a lot more open at the bottom and the top. And that's because of this height of this curve that we've done here. So what I'm going to do is if I go to view and front view. So I've got the spiral highlighted now and uh, if I press the tab key to go into edit mode <coughs> and press the A key on the keyboard to highlight all the control points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this spiral closer together. I did set it at 10, that was too high. I want to squeeze it closer together so it's the Z axis I want to scale. So it's S on the keyboard for scale. Z to limit it to the Z axis and then if I move the mouse in you can see those lines are coming back together again and uh, I'm going to leave it perhaps at there because I do want a spiral finish to my um, my ring so you can see that looks a lot better now what that will also have done is it will have restored the thickness here to be one by one um, the more offset that is the more likely the thickness will be reduced from, um, let me just come out of edit mode, from the value that's, uh, that's set here. Okay, so that's one by one. Now the other thing that I need to do now, if I view it from the top view, if I measure the internal diameter of this, it's not going to be anything like, yeah, it's about 15 millimeters, it's not going to be anything like 18.14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, mesh, I'm going to add a cylinder and I'm just going to use this cylinder to size the uh, internal diameter of my ring. So I'm going to set that at 18.14 millimeters 
and 18.14 millimeters so that's uk size p plus and um i'll just change the z to say 10 uh, no maybe a little bit more 20 okay now i'm only going to use that to size my ring so if i go to view and top and uh, I need to select the spiral now because it's the spiral that's controlling my ring shape. And uh, with the spiral highlighted, can't quite see it on this screen at the moment. If I just hide those, there's the spiral highlighted. So I've just restricted the cylinder and the ring from view. Um, so with the spiral highlighted, if I press S on the keyboard, and move my mouse out slowly you can see I can open up the size of my ring now because this is a spiral you're never going to get an exact circle there um, but also because we've got this gap here um, what we want to do really is we can't really make this exactly 18.14 millimeters so what we want to do is scale it such that it's slightly smaller than that. So if we take our cylinder here and uh, the snap is off at the moment. And if I press the G key on the keyboard, I can move the cylinder in any direction. And so I'm moving the cylinder and I want it so that it's just, just slightly bigger than my ring just very slightly bigger than my ring not too much but just slightly and therefore what's going to happen is that when you get this made because you've got this gap here as you put the ring on you'll be able to tension it you'll be able to open it up very very slightly and uh, so it will it will it will be a snug fit here on this end of the ring because you you must realize that this end of the ring is because it's a spiral shape this end of the ring will be sl very slack. Um, so we're keeping the other end just a little bit smaller size than you actually need. Okay, so um, we can now press uh, highlight the cylinder there. We don't want to 3D print that, so we can press X on the keyboard to delete it. And then here's our ring, our ring with the name Susan around it, with our spiral shape. And essentially what we've got to do is to export that, <coughs> excuse me, either as a wave front object or as an STL file. I usually do it to the desktop. I'll just call it uh, Susan. And um, what you must then do is to go to Netfab Basic, um, import that object into Netfab Basic and just allow Netfab Basic to repair it. And then essentially you have a ring that you can get 3D printed, probably best in, in uh, steel or in bronze or in brass. Okay, so that's how you can make a personalized named ring, um, wrapping it around a spiral rather than wrapping it around a circle. Thank you.